In a bid to broaden its horizons, Infotech Network has established its first ever converged platform that serves as a unifying factor between the media and entertainment, as well as technology industries. As you may know, in today's technological-driven world, there is an increased media and entertainment consumption pattern, leveraging on this gap in order to engage audience on a more personal and proactive level. This has birthed a need to establish DigiVision, a show that captures the new realities of tech use and consumption across all levels. DigiVision seeks to create a platform for merging interest in both the media and entertainment world using ICT. With that said, you're sincerely welcomed. I am Bayeru Agabi. At this point, let's hear from Fatima Ajaye on what we call DigiGist for fast-paced stories, innovation that will excite you, followed by Infotech Impact, that is news and development that made news in the past one week. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Digitist. And I am Fasima Ajay. This week we have another young in the field. Her name is Michelle Ekure. She is a shoemaker. Yeah, a shoemaker. She's a graduate of UNED Ben and she has a BS in International Studies and Diplomacy. She has decided to go into shoemaking. Not makeup, not even planning for shoemaking. That makes her quite unique because obviously we would have expected that a guy would be a shoemaker, not a lady. But let's ask her why she has decided to go into shoemaking and not something else. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Fatima. Do you want to tell us what actually inspired this thought? Why did you decide to go into yeah, makeup or event planning? Why shoemaking? Mm. That was very interesting because I didn't see myself back in the, uh, way back in the school that I was going to be a shoemaker. But uh, it was all of these things started when I was in, when I just graduated. I was working and uh, where I was working, the pay wasn't regular and uh, the guy was owing a lot. And the money wasn't enough for me. So, and alongside with my job, I was selling the slippers for a company. And uh, one day I just asked, I asked that particular company if they could produce or make sandals for me with my label in it. And they said, yes, they do it. But it was way too expensive for me to resell. So a friend of mine introduced me to someone that makes shoes, or the guy that taught me how to make yes, shoes. Okay. So when I met him, um, one day I just watched him what, make shoes. And I don't know, something just, I was so excited watching him. The way he cut the pattern, the way he cut the pattern on the leather, and the way he was lacing the shoes, it was so, I was just amazed. Why did you decide to be a diplomat, just like what you started in school? Why did you decide to go out of the picture? What, like, normal ladies wouldn't do that? That's very unique. Yes, I tried. I, I, while I was working, while I was learning how to make shoes, I was looking for a job alongside with it because at the initial stage, it was as if I was, uh, I was deceiving myself. Like, oh really, you want to make shoes, Abby? <laughs> so is this shoe that will take you to where you're going to? Hmm? Okay, but I was looking for a job. But the day I decided not to look for a job, I think my uncles asked me to send my CV. So I went to my sent, uh, my inbox, my email, and I went to sent messages. I saw 65 sent messages. So I was wondering the people I've been sending messages to. So I took my time, I opened everything, and it was CV. Mm. So I've been sending my CVs to 65 companies in Nigeria, and none. Replied. <laughs> it was so horrible. I feel like crying. That day, I, didn't, I ended up not sending my CV to my uncle. I told myself that I was not going to work. That was the day I decided to go into shoemaking. I told myself, I will do this. Okay, at what point did you think it was cool enough for you to get other people to learn how to make shoes alongside with you? Because the day I found out that you can actually, it's profitable, you can actually make a lot of money from it. Because shoemaking is wide. 
It's not about cutting your pattern. You can make, if you know what you're doing, you can make a lot of money at every step of the way. Some people, it's just about cutting leather. It's about lasting. But for me, it's not all about just sitting and making the shoes. I love to teach, maybe the way the guy that taught me, because you know those roadside um, shoemakers, sure, yeah. the way they teach, they don't teach you properly, they don't impart the knowledge in you. But I found a way to simplify it. Really? Do you want yes. to teach me how to make it? Yes, I can just okay, put it let's through. Start now. The first thing you create the pattern for your soul. Okay. Okay. So these are some of the patterns for Slippers. Slippers. Okay. okay, and uh, this is size 45. This okay, is you uh, measure the person's you, leg. You measure the person's leg and you create the patterns for the foot for oh. the slippers. Okay. Uh, this is the leather I placed on the Makonora, and if you can see, this is my label. Label. Okay, make sure uh, leather. Yeah. Okay. So you place it on your uh, on your Makonora. So if you like, if you want to add beauty to it, you can stitch round. Okay, so, so how do you make it look like a proper shoe like this? Is still beautiful show. Yeah, it's still, it's a long process. Oh, okay. You know, you have to create the pattern. Okay, this is also meant for making shoes. Yes, what this is, is it's positive. called last. Last. L-A-S-T. Okay. Last, like last, last. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Not like last. in place. Yeah. Okay, As so it, what is it meant for? How do you use it? Okay, uh, we use it to mold the shoe, but we actually call it, we use it to last the shoe. Okay. Yeah, and you also use it to create the pattern for any pattern you want, like if you want something like Why this. Why can't say gum, scissors, what exactly do you use it for? Do you of course, you use, you use your scissors to cut your your leather, anything you want to. Me. Let me see now, <laughs> Put it me now. Okay, um, let me get. Okay. This is a leather. Yeah, this is a leather. Mm -hmm. Let's, um, okay, if you want to make um, like um, two strap slippers like Brush, this, okay. so this is the pattern for it. Okay, this is the pattern for it. So you place it, like it must be straight. So depending on what you want, you cut on the leather. Then, depending on you, there are some leather that we have thick leather, we have different uh, test your leather. leather, thick, soft. So, if you're like this is soft, I can use it to make any slippers like this. So, what I do, I'll get a lining for it, like this. Like, this is a thick leather, okay? So, I just cut a straight so I can use it like that without lining. It's not like your shirt or your dress. You know, there's some light dress, you have lining inside. Yeah, exactly. yeah, same thing with shoes. So since this is light leather, so you, you need a hard um, leather as your lining. Okay. That's what you do. Then you cut with your scissors. So before you, you place... Can you try and cut it out? Okay. Let's see how it works. You have to spread out your gum. You spread it out and you have to make another, uh, trace another uh, Just strap, strap like, like this. Guess. Yeah, on the same leather so that you can apply gum on the other side of the leather, then gum boots. Okay, so okay. you want to put it on this side? Is it that you just put it here? No, you have to make punches What's first. Punch? Okay, this is what this okay. use it to make holes for this. Yes. Okay. So you punch your holes, then use your cutting knife to yeah. cut. Look, can you so also use a blade? <coughs> yes, you can use blade if okay. you want. To. After making the punches, now put it in the uh, in the it hole. Like this. Yes. Yes, you can. After making the holes, you can fix your your leather on it. On it, okay. Yeah. Then this you get then you it. apply oh, gum. Okay. I guess making the shoe is a complete it's, it's a different, it's a different, different process, yes. Is it, which is more task. Sure. <laughs> That's why it's more expensive. Yes. <laughs> so 
decide to let you make it. Why didn't you just decide to start selling shoes? Like buy and sell ready-made shoes or probably sell clothes. There are different things guys. Why did you decide to just go in deep? Like learning how to make shoes? Mm, well for me, shoemaking is something that is fascinating. I I enjoy when I see people and doing something different, you know, bringing their creativity to what they do. So going to buy shoes and selling is just like <laughs> you've lost ideas. <laughs> so are you saying people that buy and sell that have lost ideas? Those that that's the, the their line of business. For me, I believe if you want to do something, if you really if you love something, if you want to do it learn it and bring it out, put your creativity in it. So why did you decide to learn shoemaking? Why not tailoring? Why not catering? Why not makeup? Why shoemaking? Ah, oh, okay. Um, I don't know. I think Because I'm you a... like Michelle's face? <laughs> <laughs> Funny enough, it was when I came for the training, I think I'm seeing her face for the first time, so it's not actually because of, of her face. Okay. But I, I love to work with leather. I, I do leather work in the past, but not shoes, bags. So I wanted to know more. I wanted to know about shoes and all that. So I felt, okay, let me learn how to make shoes as well, since I already have an idea of leather. And moreover, I I just love to work with leather. I just want to like one word for young innovators like you that have different things in their mind, but they are scared. That they are really scared, like people are not going to key into it, that people are not going to encourage them. What do you have to say to them? The thing is, um, you you are the only person that can encourage yourself. You are the only person that can push yourself. Yes, there, there was a time that I I was telling myself, oh God, this is so it's so much for me. I want to quit. But when I look at the future of what I can actually achieve from shoemaking, that alone gives me courage to stay back and keep doing what I do as in it's it, it's like it gives you strength it's it, because when you it's not all about you writing your vision if you write your vision if you have dream you have to run with your vision you have to if that chase you each day when you wake up you pray about it you ask God okay what can I do what's the way forward find out more about that thing you want to do I always tell people, don't always reason the money. There are some businesses you can start up without huge capital. Like shoemaking is amazing. You've just heard from Michelle Ekora. She just told us how interesting and lucrative it is being a female shoemaker. That's kind of really unique. I just hope our young innovators, young entrepreneurs, will just stand up and actually do what they know how to do best so that the rate of unemployment in Nigeria can actually reduce. And that will be all on this week's edition of Digigest, as I remain Fatima Ajay. Bye for now. Hello, I'm Bayero Agabib. As we face the new society driven by data and information, Cyber Africa provides you a trusted platform. Here we understand how telecoms, the internet and the media are redefining our world. Cyber Africa, connected Africa. What's going on, GSM? Uh, global system. Uh, mobile network. What's the full meaning of GSM? GSM, GSM, GSM. GSM. Mm. Jenna. Mm. <laughs> Should be Jenna Madness. I don't even know. Mm. What's the name of GSM? Ah, GSM. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Um, global system for mobile communication.
The world is innovating so fast, impacting the way we live, work or play. For countries around the world that has embraced innovation, great opportunities in wealth are created through open innovation as government, the industry, the academics and the communities are playing key roles to make innovation possible through a vibrant ecosystem which is key in achieving the global goal of sustainable development. According to the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, the country's unemployment rate has increased to 9.9% in the third quarter of 2015, representing a fourth consecutive rise in the unemployment rate since the third quarter of 2014. The Bureau reveals that a total of 1,454,620 Nigerians are unemployed in this quarter compared to 529,923 in the second quarter, and this has led to an increase from 8.2% in second quarter 2015 to 9.9% .9 in third quarter 2015. Despite the high rate of unemployment, current recession, Nigeria remains one of the biggest economies in Africa and an emerging one around the world, with great human and material resources and a great population of young people who are passionate to drive change through technology. The issue of unemployment is a major issue in Nigeria, more importantly with the teaming youth, the energetic, the vibrant, ready to explode. What we are doing our part as NIDA is to train them in the new way of doing business, the new way of making money, which is ICT driven. At the moment, the country is facing an economic recession that has kept its citizens in great hardship and very bleak future. Oftentimes, one wonders how a country richly endowed with enormous potentials and before now, great economic outlook as a top oil producing country finds itself in underdevelopment and even economic mess. The future of Nigeria is gradually being shaped by a tenacity of young people who have embraced technology, innovation and entrepreneurship and have decided against all odds to make impacts. Uh, we are combining two things together. The designing the technology aspect, which is the creativity itself, I'm converting it to money, that is the entrepreneur. Now I'm not confident of myself and my uh, other colleagues too are confident of themselves that we can now do something for, to better the future and increase the GDP of the economy. There are so many youths out there who, are, who have this creativity burning hot in them, but they don't have anyone to put them through. With the level at which we are living, I bet it's with others to say, the sky is our starting point, not the limits. The recent visit of Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO and co-founder of Facebook, to the CC Hub in Yaba shows that the world is taking notice of what is happening in Nigeria. And the CNN report says that the visit was a great boost. We have witnessed several businesses co-locating in the same area with the hub and many other technology hubs are also springing up in other cities like Abuja where more young innovators are showcasing their talents and gradually coming into limelight. There's something here in Africa, especially Lagos, Yaba, that most people are not seeing and for the for Mark Zuckerberg to have come, it shows that there is a lot of things going to come out here. We have talent and we have the, the people who can actually turn this, this great nation around and that can make it great and, and those are our young people and we need to invest in them and give them everything they need to build the future that we want to see. Startups are setting the pace, making impact, expanding their operations while providing employment for Nigerians. There has been an increased awareness in social entrepreneurship where technology is used as a tool to drive social causes in driving social entrepreneurship in Nigeria. Technology has really enhanced my mode of thinking. We have a phone, so you can check your phones for designs on shoemaking, the different patterns. You can learn how to make shoes patterns from YouTube. So technology has helped in that way too. And then the whole networking thing, you can ask someone else, you get. You might not meet the person like physically, but you can actually contact the person, call, chat or something. So it has helped in that way. There is no doubt that there is great desire 
and passion for innovation in Nigeria. The opportunity that is created with increased use of mobile phones is enormous and largely untapped. There is a greater need to create more awareness and open innovations to foster both corporate, mobile businesses and startup innovations in Nigeria as to grow a mature ecosystem where successes become more predictable and more replicable. Ugochi Emmanuel reporting for GDVation. In line with President Muhammad Buhari's administration to create jobs and opportunities to create entrepreneurs among Nigerian youths using information and communication technology tools, the National Information and Technology Development Agency, NIDA, has commenced the training of some selected members of the National Youth Service Corps through open source software development. The training, which is set to provide a platform for the core members to showcase their talents and ideas, would aid job creation and revenue generation as an alternative to oil. The Acting Director General of NIDA, Dr. Vincent Alatunji, says Nigerian youth are energetic. It is time for us to start thinking of how to be self-reliant, work for ourselves, and service the sectors. Nigerian youth are energetic, they are vibrant, they have potential. All we need is for us to be given the opportunity. And what NIDA is trying to do is to create a platform for you to be able to express yourselves to be able to be self-reliant, to go all out there and conquer and be self-reliant. NIDA is trying to set up innovation hubs, having two per zone to focus on the need of each zone and see how we can use ICT to address the problems and work with all our sectors to incubate ideas as the ideas can move to solutions and solutions, if mentored, can develop and move to the level of commercialization and earn money from which people can be employed, pay taxes and live well. We are trying to set up innovation hubs in all the things of the country to look at specific needs of these zones and see how we can use IT to address these uh, problems. How do you want to do that? To work with federal government, to work with uh, private sector, to work with the organization, to incubate ideas that you have. If you have ideas, you don't have access, you don't want, you don't even know how to move forward with it. Your ideas can move to solutions. Solutions, when you incubate, you mentor them, they develop entrepreneurship skill, they can move to the level of commercialization. When you commercialize, you earn money, you employ people, you pay taxes, okay? You earn foreign exchange, and that comes to Nigeria. You know what that means. The representative of the management of NYSM commended NIDA for the opportunity given to the car members to acquire deeper knowledge of what they have learnt in school and urged the participants to concentrate more on the training and put into practice what they have learnt. I want to encourage you to please be punctual and partake. Learn. What you are learning now is for your own good. Tomorrow you can teach others. As our father in the house said, whatever you learn now is your own knowledge. Nobody can take it away from you. Car members expressed their sincere appreciation and spoke about what they have learned and how well they are willing to make use of their acquired skills. In the short time I've been here, we have learned how to create websites and host them using templates like WordPress and Joomla. So I'm looking forward to learning more so that I can create my own codes and create my websites from simple languaging. But when I was um, selected to partake in that training, I came here seeing how it's been done from Wi-Fi to Joomla, WordPress and Drupal. Um, I was able to organize this particular website www.mygoldensms.com and to that I added innovations to that that now you can even send messages and they will enter people's phone calling their respective names. Not the normal routine, their customer, but now you can send a bulk message that will enter somebody's phone and they, it will call, actually call the person's name in the content of the message. In a bid to further promote, strengthen and showcase tourism, the Niger State Government has disclosed plans to partner with the Nigerian Postal Service for a smooth and organized service delivery. The Commissioner for Information, Jonathan Vassal, speaking at the EMS Nigeria Managers event held in MENA, says the government is looking to see if the career service NIPOS can have the emblem 
of its tourists. Naipo's career service is a worldwide emblem of tourist sites of most stamps. This is to promote tourism because they reach the rich areas and it will give the state an opportunity to showcase its tourist sites. Your organization is very unique, very prior to promote tourism. Because if all our tourist sites will have it, maybe even in your stamps, in your, in your, in your parcel, uh, ambulance, and you parcel all our tourist sites, it will go a long way to the outside world. The Postmaster General B.C. Adegui says there are opportunities, potentials and possibilities in the post, but the service needs a little push in the area of motivation and psychological reorientation to transform EMS into a world-class career outfit. Uh, since my assumption in office, the privilege to interact with staff in Abuja and various formations in Lagos. I've seen the opportunities, potentials and possibilities inherent in Ipos, but also the little push in the area of motivation, psychological orientation, and ethos of business mindedness could make for the service in all these ramifications, the cornerstone, the builder cannot afford to forsake. The government will partner with NIPOS to enhance the growth and development of the organization. Well, that is the show for the week. I am Bayeru Agabi. Bye for now.